Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about a method that allows us to generate the solution to the differential equation without actually looking for the solution directly. And that method is called the Pickard iteration method. Now this method is used to prove the existence and uniqueness theorem for differential equations, which we're not going to do here, but we're going to pretty much illustrate how the method works, which will then give us some intuition on how the actual theorem of existence and uniqueness actually is broken down. So recall that the first order initial value problem is given by y prime is equal to f of xy so that's your first order differential equation, but if I give you a point y of x0 is equal to y0, then this is going to give you a particular solution. So the theorem says that if f is well behaved, then there exists a unique solution y. So how to solve this differential equation? Well, if you didn't really want to think about it much, you'd probably be like, okay, I want to solve for y, so I'm just going to take the integral of both sides of that equation. So if I have the equation y prime is equal to f of xy, and I integrate both sides with respect to x, then that's going to give me the equation y of x is equal to some arbitrary constant, which you can find to be y0, plus the integral from x0 to x of f of t, y of t, dt. So this equation can be verified. So verify that this is a solution well of course when you differentiate the left hand side you get y prime differentiate off y zero you get nothing uh, take the integral the derivative of this integral by the fundamental theorem that's just going to give you f of x y so of course this is a solution so what is it actually equal to and this pretty much is going to start what is called the Pickard iteration method. So we're going to define a function phi such that it has the property phi 0 is equal to y 0, the initial condition, and phi k plus 1 is equal to phi 0 plus the integral from x 0 to x of f of t phi k of t dt. So this is pretty much going to give us an iteration method um, that is going to help us solve the differential equation. And the theory says that as k goes to infinity, the function phi is going to get close to y, the solution. As long as this function f is well behaved, then one can show that by using what is called the Bonnet fixed point theorem, this sequence is going to converge to a unique called fixed point, where that fixed point is actually the solution. So let me pretty much illustrate how this method works. So I'm going to solve the equation y prime is equal to x plus y such that y of 0 is equal to 2. We've already discussed how to solve these differential equations, but let us assume that for the sake of this that you don't know it, you don't remember it, or you don't want to go through that process. So this is how we're going to do this. So we're going to define phi 0 to be equal to the initial condition 2. And we're going to define phi of 
x k x uh, k plus one is going to be equal to phi zero plus the integral from x zero, which is zero, to x of x plus y. So in terms of t, that's going to be t plus phi k t dt. So this is going to be our setup. So phi 1 is going to be equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to x of t plus phi 0. Phi 0 by definition is equal to 2, so this is going to be the integral from 0 to x of t plus 2. And that's going to be equal to 2 plus 1 half x squared plus 2x. After rearranging, this is going to be 2 plus 2x plus 1 half x squared. So that's going to be 5 1. Again, phi 2 is going to be equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to x of t plus phi 1 dt. So substituting, that's going to be 2 plus the integral from 0 to x of t plus our previous solution, 2 plus 2t two plus 1 half t squared dt. Integrate from 0 to x, so we're going to get 2 plus 1 half t squared plus 2t plus t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial t cubed. We can combine like terms if we want, or we could have done it in the previous step, and that's going to give us 2 plus 2t two plus 3 halves t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial t cubed. So we'll do another iteration see if we can start generating a pattern here. So phi 3 is going to be equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to x of t plus 2 plus 2t two plus 3 halves t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial t cubed integrate with respect to t. I'm going to combine my t and 2t to start. So that's going to give me 2 plus, so the integral of 2 is going to be 2t. The integral of 3t is going to be 3 halves t squared. And then the integral of 3 halves t squared is going to be equal to 3 over 3 factorial t cubed plus 1 over 4 factorial t to the fourth. And these variables should be x. All right, so maybe you can start to see a pattern here. So phi four is going to be equal to two plus two x plus three over three factorial x cubed plus three over four factorial x to the fourth plus one over five factorial x to the fifth. Going again, we're going to have five, five, five is gonna be equal to two plus two x plus 3 over, wait a minute, it's supposed to be 3 over 2x, oh, I've messed up. So that's going to be 3 over 2x squared plus 3 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 3 over 4 factorial x to the fourth plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the five. And this is going to be 3 over 2x squared plus 3 over 3x cubed plus 3 over 4 factorial x to the 4th, plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the 6th, x to the 5th. There should be a 3 there. And then lastly, 1 over 6 factorial x to the 6th. And you can probably see that this process is going to be a little bit more tedious if you actually go through it step by step. So let's see if we can break apart this 5, 5 a little bit. So 5, 5 is going to be equal to 2 plus 2x, and I'm going to do something with this in just a minute, and I'm going to factor out a 3 out of the rest of this. So that's going to give us x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial plus x to the 6 over 6 factorial, and this should look vaguely familiar. Now I'm going to break apart this first piece. So 2 is the same as 2 
plus 1 minus 1. And 2x is the same as 3x or 2x plus x minus x plus 3 times this bracket. So this is the same thing as writing 3 plus 3x there. And then we have this minus 1 minus x plus 3 times your bracket term. And then I'm going to factor out a 3 out of these two sets. So we're going to have 3 times 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. And pretty much we're going to generalize this for phi k. And this is going to go all the way up to where? So notice that phi 5 ends at 1 more than that index. So this is going to go up to x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. And then we have this minus x minus 1 term that is hanging out in the middle. So what do we see? So as k goes to infinity, we get that phi infinity is equal to what? So that's 3 times the summation from uh, L is equal to 0 to infinity of what is this? So this is going to be x to the L over L factorial minus x minus 1. And you should recognize this as the power series for the exponential function e to the x. So therefore, phi infinity, which by the theory is equal to y, says that the solution yx is equal to 3e to the x minus x minus 1. And you can verify that this is the actual solution to the differential equation. So let me overview this quickly. So we have our initial value problem. y prime is equal to fxy such that y of x0 equals y0. This is equivalent to the equation y of x is equal to y of 0 plus the integral from x 0 to x of f of t y of t dt. And sometimes we call this the associated integral equation. Because now our unknown is not under a derivative, it is now under an integral as well. And solving integral equations is a totally uh, different topic. So we define phi 0 to be equal to y 0 and phi k plus 1 to be equal to y 0 plus the integral from x 0 to x of f of t phi k dt. And as k goes to infinity, phi k will tend to y if the function f is well behaved. And this method is what we call, again, the Pickard iteration method. It requires some knowledge of power series for the most part, um, but if you have no other way of solving the differential equation, this method, provided it does have a unique solution, will always generate the exact solution.